LEDs can be used as capacitors as well. What? Nobody's ever told you this? Welcome to Mr. Carlson's lab and a brand new tech tip series on this channel. A series where I'll show you all sorts of neat things about electronics, both modern and antique alike. So if you're new to this channel and you'd like to stay current in this series, definitely subscribe and hang around. All right, I'll show you how this LED can become a capacitor and I'll even tune a circuit with it. Let's get started. Diffused red LEDs make fantastic capacitors for tuning circuits. So normally when you run an LED, it glows, right? That's the whole idea of an LED and in a normal application, you put it in a tester here and of course it glows. It's an LED, of course, right? Light emitting diode. But in order to use this LED as a capacitor, I have to operate it in reverse so it doesn't glow. So basically what I'm doing is I'm using it as a varactor diode. So when I apply voltage to the LED in reverse, I'm actually widening, if, you were, if this had plates in it like a capacitor, like this capacitor here, when I apply voltage to that diode in reverse, I'm actually opening the capacitor or widening the plates. I would be widening the depletion region inside that LED. When I reduce the voltage in reverse to that LED, it's like me closing the plates of a capacitor. So what I'll do is I'll set up a, a little circuit here. I'll show you a schematic and I'll give you an example. I'll attach this to the circuit first and show you how it affects the frequency, right? With just a normal capacitor. And then I'll use this LED as the same device that I have right here. The variable capacitor is attached to a little Hartley oscillator, which is just built on a piece of scrap printed circuit board here. So this little piece of printed circuit board has little islands on it. I'll zoom in on it so you can see it there a little bit better. It has little islands on it. And I designed a small little tool to make this very easy. It's actually a store-bought tool that's modified. And it makes these islands on these little printed circuit boards. So if you need to prototype with some through hole parts, you can do it very quickly. Basically squeeze and the tool move the circuit board and you've created an island. Uh, it works very well. This is double sided. So the back side is solid. So it acts as shielding. So it works very well in the circuit. It's surprisingly stable little Hartley oscillator right here. So this is around video number 160 in my Patreon electronics course. If you're interested in you know, modifying a tool to do this and making and prototyping boards like this, uh, this here is basically this schematic right here that I'm showing you. So this is a Hartley oscillator. That's this. You'll notice there's one extra transistor on here. That extra transistor is just an emitter follower to drive the coax to the counter and to create a little bit of isolation. So what we're working with today is basically this right here. From this area back, that's exactly what you see right here. This is the test fixture where this capacitor is plugged in. So normally I would have the LED plugged in again in reverse, right? Because we're varying the voltage to this LED in reverse in order to change the width of the depletion region in the LED. So you can picture this missing right here and a variable capacitor plugged in right now, which this is. So I'll give you an example of the two. So right now this is plugged into the test fixture of the Hartley oscillator. So what I'll do is I'll attach the battery. Okay, so now this is gonna couple to me, right, as I get closer to this, because this is a big open capacitor right now. So it's gonna couple to me a little bit. So what I'll do is I will put my hand on here and you'll see I can, it'll actually vary the megahertz Look at how much that varies. Like I'm moving, you know, megahertz in frequencies by doing this. It's hard to hold this and move this at the same time. It's kind of, you can see that, how it's varying it. So that's what a variable capacitor does in a circuit, right? So now we know the variable capacitor moves everything, right? If I hold the, this is the part that's actually grounded here. So you can see that moving it, the plates in, right? So closing the plates, weighing down the circuit basically is adding capacitance and then of course you know lightening up the circuit you know opening the plates causes the frequency to rise so what i'll do is i'll unplug this okay and what i'll do is i'll grab the led this is the little led right here and make sure that i put it in reverse so the line side faces upwards 
here we go. So I'll zoom you in a little bit better so you can see what's going on, hopefully. Zoom you into the frequency counter. And now, when I vary the voltage to this LED, look at this. It's doing the same thing as the capacitor. And it's surprisingly stable. It is actually very stable. This is just a nine volt battery, no regulated supply. Everything is wide open here. I even have light shining on everything, which I'll talk about in a moment, which is another neat little aspect of this. And look at that. So right now, the, this little free running oscillator is sitting at you know 26.986 megahertz. And look at how stable that is, you know? Not bad for something that's in an open air, right? And uh, just on a, you know, a standard piece of, uh, you know, scrap printed circuit board, right? So now, if, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to make a, a, a variable frequency oscillator, you know, this would do that with a VR. And you'll notice a lot of the more modern AM radios. Putting a capacitor in an AM radio is very expensive. Veractor diodes and a potentiometer is much cheaper. And that's the reason that you'll see in modern AM radios, they don't even have a variable cap. They're using a, an actual Veractor diode to change the frequencies in the AM broadcast band, right? Again, cutting costs, right? You know, a, a variable cap, they look a little different than this nowadays, right? They're a little square plastic block with a whole bunch of little adjustments on it, but they're more expensive than just a standard VR and a Veractor diode. So now if I pull this out and say, I'll grab a, a newer red LED. So this one here is a clear high brightness red LED. I'm just making sure I can find the line here. So I'll put that in again in reverse, right? So you can move this around. See that? Not as much range, right? But still, you know, a fair amount of range. Not bad, right? So, and you know, the relatively stable as well. In order for this circuit to be very stable, of course, it should be in an enclosed box. And of course, the temperature should be stabilized and everything. But anyways, uh, you know, the air, it is relatively stable for something that's open just like this. So here's where things get even stranger. So. Say you know, oh yeah, I, I know about using ver, you know older LEDs as Veractor diodes. Yeah, sure, no problems. Did you know that if you use a modern LED, you can change the capacitance by shining another LED in it? So you can fine tune it with by changing the brightness of another red LED. Look at that. So now you have a light controlled oscillator. Kind of interesting, right? So if you wanted to say, make a fancy little oscillator circuit and you wanted to have some feedback to maybe control stability, you could actually have another LED in a pipe like this. And you could vary the brightness of the LED to also fine tune or stabilize this circuit. You could actually steer the oscillator that way. Very neat, eh? Let's see how a high brightness green LED acts as a capacitor in this circuit. So you'll find that the high brightness green LEDs add quite a bit of capacitance to start. I'll pull this out here. So if I move this right to the top here, you'll see that we're starting out at you know, 29.6. And by moving this right to the top, you can see by moving this down, it doesn't affect anything, right? You know, cause it's just, just a variable resistor. There's nothing in circuit for those of you that may want to see that. So I'll put this in circuit and you can see it takes it you know, from basically 29.6 down to 24.5, right? So adding quite a bit of capacitance to start off. And then of course it's going to add more from there. So as I bring this, closer to ground. So right now I'm applying the most amount of voltage I can from the nine volt battery here to this LED in reverse, right? So now as I bring the voltage down to ground, what I'm doing at that point is I'm bringing or making the depletion region smaller. So I'm adding more capacitance. And as you can see, I can bring it down from there all the way to 2349. So basically 235 to 24.5, right? So I'm getting about one megahertz of movement with this high brightness green. And of course it weighs it down quite a bit. Whereas if I take, you know, the older diffused red LED, it doesn't really weigh the circuit down. So I'll move this right up to the top where it is. It doesn't weigh it down all that much. You can see if I plug this in there. So it basically takes it from, you know, 29.6, 
right? Only down to 28.2, you know, whereas the other one dropped it right down to 24, right? And there's quite a bit of movement here from 28.246, right, all the way down to 26.865, right? Around there, right? 8.6, right? So quite a bit of movement. So still, the ultimate Veractor diode, if you want to use an LED, is the older red diffused ones. They seem to work the best. And of course, if you want something where you want feedback and you want to light control it, uh, you can use that uh, the red LED with another red LED to give it some feedback. That was pretty neat, right? So there you go. Hope you enjoyed. Again, if you want to prototype something like this and learn how to build a tool, check out my electronics course. Or if you want to get more fancy and start prototyping stuff like this, that is there as well. I teach you how to make these circuit boards and everything right at your house, just like this. If you're enjoying this series of tech tips videos, definitely subscribe and hang around. I have many more tech tips to share with all of you involving both modern and antique electronic devices alike. If you'd like to take your electronics knowledge to a much higher level, check out my Patreon electronics course. I have over 220 videos there at this point with projects for you to build and learn from. So there's solid state projects to build, vacuum tube projects to build, I even teach you how to make your own circuit boards and prototype right at home. There's so much great information there for you to learn from. You're definitely going to want to check it out if you're into electronics. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on that link, it'll take you right there and you can check it out. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.